Hey gang, just continuing on with a very brief video prior to next Monday's class. We're going to be continuing on with the cardiac topic. We're going to look at medications for heart attacks, also known as myocardial infarction, medications for angina, and also medications for dysrhythmias. Prior to coming to class, I hope you're able to look up the key terms stable angina versus unstable angina. So have a peek at that. I'd also like you to become familiar with the terms infarction versus ischemia. They sound the same, they are similar, but they are different. So have an understanding of how they are different. And also the treatments for coronary artery disease. The gold standard is angioplasty, uh, if it's appropriate for your patient, and that's where we use a balloon to dilate the coronary arteries and make them wider. You can watch a video of that on YouTube if you'd like. And also coronary artery bypass grafting, also known as cabbage. You can also watch a video on that um, if you'd like. There are videos on YouTube for both of those procedures, very cool. Uh, angina, what is it? Well, your heart is a muscle about the size of your fist and it's constantly squeezing. How it gets its blood is the arteries that wrap around the outside of it. Those are known as the coronary arteries. You have three main ones. You have your LAD, uh, your um, RCA, and also your circumflex. Now these arteries are like little tiny garden hoses and unfortunately they can be lined with fat and plaque and when that happens it reduces the blood flow to that actual muscle. They can also be um, hardened and they can also be, uh, you can get blockages such as um, a thrombus, that would be a heart attack. Um, and then whenever there's a decreased amount of blood flow to an area of the heart, whether it be because of a spasm or because of that fat um, cholesterol line in the artery decreasing that blood flow, it results in decreased oxygen getting to the muscle. Similar to if your arm fell asleep while you were sleeping on it, you slept on it the wrong way and you wake up and you can't move it to save your life. Um, or if your leg fell asleep, you, you feel that sensation of numb, pins, needly, and you can't move the muscle at all. Well, whenever a muscle doesn't get enough oxygen, then it doesn't um, perform the way it should. And your heart is a big muscle. It's also one of the most important muscles that keeps you alive. So please um, have an understanding of what we would want to do to treat angina. Okay, so if it's caused by a lack of blood flow from a spasm, then the, the treatment would be to dilate those arteries to increase the blood flow. Um, also, we would want to rest. That would be a key. Whatever was causing the, the spasm or the heart to work harder, we would want to eliminate that cause if possible. So you want to tell your patient to rest. Um, you want to give them oxygen or increase the oxygen to the heart muscle. And you also want to dilate the coronary arteries. We do that with nitrates. We do that with beta blockers. And we also do that with calcium channel blockers and some other medications. Uh, we also use antiplatelets analgesics, and um, anticoagulants. So those are medications we'll talk about. Uh, we won't specifically dive into them. The meds that I want you to know, we're going to continue on with metoprolol, also known as low presser. That's a beta blocker. Um, nitroglycerin or nitro spray. Uh, that's a rescue medicine for angina. And amlodopine or Norvasc, calcium channel blocker. And amiodarone or cardarone. Uh, also, Angina, you can have the classic in your face angina or you can have the very subtle vague signs of angina. So the classic ones are obvious, most lay people know them, so you probably already know them. It's the chest pain, the heaviness. But there's vague, subtle signs of angina and I'd like you to look them up and tell them to me at the beginning of class. So have an idea of what those subtle signs or vague signs of angina are. Um, patients that typically experience this, this um, kind of angina are diabetics and females. So if you could peek at those subtle signs, that would be great. Nitrates are important medications. They dilate the arteries, so they increase the blood flow to the actual heart muscle. Beta blockers, that's low presser or metoprolol. Again, it ends with lol, so you know it's a beta blocker. It lowers the heart rate and it lowers the blood pressure. Ultimately, what that means is it tells the heart not to work as hard. Um, calcium channel blockers are also another medication that dilate the artery and also slow down the rate of the heart. Um, important terms or principles that we should be aware of, time is muscle when it comes to the heart. So the earlier we can diagnose a problem, the, the better we are able to improve the blood flow to that heart muscle or area and wake it up, so to speak, or revive it. The longer it goes without oxygen, the, the more damage sets in, the bruising sets in, um, it becomes ischemic, then it be, which is just lack of blood flow, and then it becomes infarcted, which is dead, dead from lack of oxygen. All right, so time is muscle. Uh, thrombolytics, we can use thrombolytics, and we'll talk about them in this class. 
that's a clot buster, and so some people will be eligible for clot busting agents. Um, however, they're no longer considered the gold therapy. They were once what we used to use with a heart attack because we know that a heart attack is a blood clot in an artery or a lack of blood flow. So we'd give a thrombolytic, it would bust open the clot, and that would restore the oxygen or the blood moving to that area of the muscle. Um, when it comes to dysrhythmias uh, in chapters 25, I'd like you to know the difference between an atrial dysrhythmia and a ventricle. Sorry, and so there's also arrhythmia. So become familiar with that terminology. I'd like you to know the key term automaticity. What does that mean? And what, is, what do the initials ICD stand for? Okay, so ICD, what does that stand for? Hopefully you already have a basic understanding from your anatomy and phys class about the rhythm of the heart or the conduction of the heart. We know that it starts in the SA node um, and it, the normal rate of the heart is 60 to 100. Then that travels down to the AV node and then it pauses there for a brief moment. Travels down the bundle of Hiss into the Purkin G fibers to the ventricles. Uh, last but not least, if, if your, your patient may be eligible for non-pharmacological treatments of dysrhythmias, these include ablation therapy and also cardioversion, and last but not least, an internal cardiac defibrillator uh, implant. So become familiar with those. If you're unsure of what those mean, please just have a look on, on Google or YouTube, and you can watch a video on the procedure or those treatments. Uh, so if you want to watch an angioplasty procedure, just look it up on YouTube and you can actually see it happening. Or if you want to watch the cabbage or coronary artery bypass graft, it's there for you to watch too. Uh, so last but not least, we're just going to review. You need to know metoprolol, which is a carryover med from last week, wink wink, and nitroglycerin, also known as uh, nitro spray. So have a look at the health teaching for that. Uh, amlodopine and amiodarone. Thanks and see you Monday.